This is the OTP, presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. When it's crunch time for your health coverage, trust Farm Bureau Health Plans to implement the perfect game plan. With over 77 years protecting Tennesseans, they know how to win. We are so glad to have you with us in the BetMGM studio for the OTP. And I think we're just going to call this one pregame. The OTP pregame. Mike, I like that. Well, and, and here's why. First of all, this is Amy Wells. Hi. TV's yeah. Amy Wells is here. And that's Ramon Foster. Hey, everybody. Titans <laughs> Radio, 104.5 The Zone, former NFL player, VFL. Yeah. You, got, you got a lot of uh, – I do. You got a lot, <laughs> a lot of, of things. I was talking to Amy earlier. I got to <laughs> consolidate my roles. Okay? That's yeah. what we're talking about right now. But yes. that's not bad. It's not. Mike. You are a well-known and much-beloved figure in our community. I appreciate it. Yes. It's, it's Renaissance good to be man. Wanted. So, good, anyway. Pre-game. Yeah. Pre-game, yes. I love so it. So, you've probably noticed, surprise, that the OTP that comes out Monday night at 8 Central is with – this lady, me, and the head coach, Brian Callahan. Sure is. How about that? Mm-hmm. And so we're doing another one that comes out Thursday nights at 8 o'clock. And we're going to have a special guest every week. So, Ramon, you don't have to do this every week. But Aww. we are going to ask you to rotate through. We, I'm in it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm in I'm live. <laughs> okay, so, and I bet Coach Mack will end up in that seat and, and others. Just people we can stop on the street. People who, who yeah. Come here. We just need a minute. Gotta, do you have here. some thoughts? The OTP pregame is the Thursday night version. We're going to play Chicago on Sunday. Are you excited to go to Chicago? I am. Uh, me actually walking through downtown Chicago last year in a preseason game was my first time ever in life. And all I've ever heard is how awesome Chicago was. Yes. And it, it is. Uh, but this time it's a little bit different. We got It's a, on. It, it counts this time. Mm-hmm. It counts this time. So, uh, yes, I'm looking forward to going back, especially when we mentioned weather also. Supposedly it's best of the best 60-ish. this weekend. 60-ish. Oh. Maybe close to 70-ish wow. by the time the game is over. You're going to need a jacket, Ramon. We're not worthy. You're going to need a jacket. <laughs> I might. I might. That sideline weather report is important. You it know, is. so I bought more polos this year because I knew I would – I mean, you're going to need one in Miami. Mm-hmm. You're going to need a polo for the two games here in September. And I'm thinking, well, I'm going to need one for Chicago, too. You can wash them, you know. Well, but like, you, do you want to wear the same thing over again? Do you wear a – wait, Mike Key. It's not wow. new, but I try not to wear the same uh, – unless we get on a win streak. Wait if a minute. If it's a I win streak, that. you're going to see the same thing. And if there, is a, if there is a beard at that time, the beard will stay. And, yeah, I mean, win streaks are different. When we were 10-0, and 0, yeah. if you look back at the pictures, yeah, it was basically the same thing every week. But you have in your brain 17 individual no, outfits? No, I don't have outfits. I have shirts or sweaters or and sweatshirts. And pants and shoes. Well, yeah, but the pants may be the same. Yeah. You can't – I mean, but – I like to wear different things. I'm with you on Whoa. that. I, and I'll be honest, I, I I was an eager beaver last year, too. I bought a whole wardrobe last year like Mike. <laughs> I'm so serious. But Mike. we did, you know, uh, we, we took some it. of the guesswork out of it because we bought the Titans radio gear, okay. which you have on As now. I am proudly displaying. Yes. yes. It's it, quite nice. Well, but it takes some of the – because it sort of identifies us. It's like we're in town with a convention or something. <laughs> <laughs> They go, oh, look, there are those guys. <laughs> Radio the, people. Yes. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, but it is nice. I mean, we did it intentionally because then you know sort of who's with the band. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And that makes it easier for the people around to know that you're official. And it takes the guesswork out of dressing. That's yep. true. I'll give you that. And and my best dress up is when I don't think about it, Mike. Absolutely. So I, I'm with you on that. Amy is looking like she's ready to just criticize you, Mike. And uh-uh. I, I got a feeling she no, wants to say you got a budget. She, but she's down with all the Titans radio stuff okay, because she does like it. I do like all and the Titans radio her, stuff. And we got her Titans radio <laughs> stuff. Because I'm included. Even last year when she had bagged on us. <laughs> I for the whole, know. I wasn't there. <laughs> I can't believe you. I still got she the merchandise. She had not bagged, but she still got the merchandise. <laughs> I had to have a kid real fast, but. Uh, <laughs> real fast. I did, I did get the merchandise. No, it is very helpful when maneuvering through stadiums, especially on game days. Sure, yeah. When you don't look like an athlete. People are confused about why you're standing in athlete spaces. Well, because um, we we go – I mean, they see the pass, and we have a pass mm-hmm. that allows us to go different places. But it is easier when they 
can equate you with doing a certain job and the pass especially with a lot of the security things. Now, it's helpful. I yeah. mean, in, in all It's logic. easier to move through the spaces that you need to be in when people understand what you're doing and your what your function is quickly. Yeah, even though I just get stares because I still look like a football player. You look in like a, a sense, player. And they're like, why are you up here with us? And <laughs> – Shouldn't you be downstairs? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're standing there with us. And they're like, oh, look at that nice guy with that player with the math club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't it nice Isn't that it he nice spends that time with them? He, well, that's a little <laughs> glimpse into the uh, it is weekends. A glimpse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what we're going to do is I have five topics for Ramon Foster, and we'll certainly be able to comment on the five topics. Uh, might even have a bonus. Ooh. Might even have a bonus. And then we're going to do key ingredients of the game delivered by Little Caesars Pizza yep. Pizza. Very excited. And about I have that. to do it in sixty seconds or less. You and know, there's a timer. There is one hundred percent a timer. <laughs> okay. You must do it within the identified time. We'll say sixty seconds today. As the season goes on, we, we might, might speed it might up. jimmy it a little okay. bit, just for my own enjoyment. All right, but, so yeah, 60 seconds is your – Let's get to OTP pregame. Ramon Foster is here. We can't waste any more of his time. He's a very <laughs> busy man. Ramon Foster, Titans offensive lineman you will be watching with most interest in this game. Well, it's a new season, so I got to watch the new guy. And that's J.C. Latham. I, and, of course, his good or bad or just okay game isn't, you know, an outlook on what the, the season's going to be or what his career is going to be either. But when you have a top ten pick at left tackle, right, from the University of Alabama, uh, it gets a little heightened when you look at him going onto the road and having his first start and will everything that we saw – translate over into the regular season because as we go through pregame right now, right, this is – the preseason is way different than the regular season. So I want to see how he adjusts, what he can handle. The things that I've liked about him so far has been one mainstay for me. Even in moments where he gets beat and he gets pushed – he doesn't get pushed over and pushed backwards. I love that about his game. We've talked about him squatting a 1,000 pounds and how much he lifts and how big his legs and calf muscles are. Well, that's important because the one thing that veteran defensive linemen love to do is to run through you any chance they get. And if you show any signs of weakness on being able to anchor down, then you find yourself in the mixer as far as trying to figure out how can I readjust as a player, as an offensive lineman. The defensive lineman knows this. If I do that one or two more times, he's going to bite on it and I'm going to beat him around the edge. So that's one thing I like about his game just to start. But it has to start with J.C. Latham. And Lloyd Cushenberry's in that conversation all in all. But we're talking about Will Levis and his career and opportunity that he's going to have to want as a quarterback too. And it starts with his backside or his blind side protection so a lot is on jc latham's plate this weekend i'm sure it won't just be me um but he is my focus point of the offensive line although i will say this too and i'm i'm a champion this as many times as i possibly can peter skaronski for pro bowl i'm <laughs> You're th- starting I, I beli- it now. i'm starting it now okay in the pregame peter skaronski for pro bowl but i think one of the most pivotal points of this will be jc latham's performance are they going to put montez sweat just up on him and just let him deal with the best defensive lineman they have? 100%. Uh, him and Demarcus Walker, too, who's yeah. played here in Nashville. Yeah. And you know how it goes. There's always a, hey, watch me get a little get back. So those are the two guys I expect to be on him. Um, Darrell Taylor is another one of those guys who's a rush specialist. But starting with Montez, wait, hey, young fella, welcome to the NFL. You know, we had all this hoopla this last summer about the young ladies in the WNBA and their introduction. Well, this happens in every sport. And specifically at that position, we got a guy in Montez Sweat that was a sack leader for the Washington Commanders and the Chicago Bears. So his ability to get after the quarterback and just be a nightmare for offensive linemen that have already been in the league, I'll be honest, I loved seeing young defensive linemen come up. They tip so much. I see their hands. I see their feet. I'm watching them talk to the older guys. What do I do on this play? Like these are the types of things that happen, but because that inexperience of J.C. Latham – if I'm a veteran like Montez Sweat that's looking to show why I wanted out of the last place I was, then, yes, put me on the rookie, and I want to see how much fun I can have with him. It's just that. And it's not personal. It's just welcome to the NFL, and we've all either gotten it in practice 
or in the games where they find a new guy. It's you transfer to a new school in a new city, Amy, and guess what? We got to see if you really if your reputation is solid. How do you prepare a rookie for that experience? It's leaning on a guy like Lloyd Cushenberry. That matters. It also knows that being co- being coached and taught by Coach Bill Callahan plays a lot into it. That's why it's funny in practice. We see those guys every day, right, and they do the exact same thing every single day with how they start up practice. They're going to hit the sled. They hit each other. Like, we can go through and tell everything they do in practice, right? And that's what he, as a young fl- player, has to understand is that's what's going to save me. If I get beat on a play, go back to my basics. If I get, you know, out of position, the technique that I've been taught day in and day out in training camp, as long as it is, and in those joint practices, I must go back to those moments right there. You have to trust the teaching because if we believe that Coach Bill Callahan is one of the best in the league, and he is because he's so technically sound, my technique is going to save me. And the other part, too, where young guys have to learn to grow. I think quarterbacks come into the league with this, but your film study. I'm watching what he did in Washington. I'm watching what he did in Chicago last year. I'm watching his backup. I'm going to watch the Seattle Seahawks, the Real Taylor tape also. Like, these are the things that he has to learn how to do, and that's where a Lord Cushenberry, um, from his standpoint, would tell him, young fella, this is how we watch film. This is what you're looking for. And it's a, uh, I say it's a simple breakdown because I've done it for so long. But what does he do in the first quarter? How does he come out in the second quarter? If they are down, does he quit? If they are up, does he quit? If he gets a sack, is does he shut it down? Like I look at the personality traits of guys because in the NFL, as it boils down to who can and who cannot, everybody usually has the goods. It honestly is a matter of what motivates them. Like an Aaron Donald type, he was trying to prove the world he was the best at it, right? So for dudes that are trying to figure it out, I look at how they react in good and bad moments, and that's one of those things I feel like would be crucial for a young rookie starter. Hey, Titans fans, celebrate each Titans win and enjoy the sweet taste of victory with a free donut at Kroger the very next day. Just download your digital coupon to score your free donut at any Kroger store. It's our way of saying thanks. Now, let's be clear. It's one free donut per transaction while supplies last. Kroger, fresh for everyone and official grocer of the Tennessee Titans. Tighten up. Home is at the forefront of all that we do. It's why we're so committed to caring for the places and spaces in which we work and live. Ashley, the official furniture provider of the Tennessee Titans. Made a rookie mistake this football season? Maybe you should have had a Snickers. Because now you can enter for the chance to turn those rookie mistakes into prizes, including a trip to Super Bowl 59. Visit snickers.com slash rookie mistakes for details. All right, defensive player to watch for Ramon Foster on the OTP pregame. Is it okay if I give two? Mm, I'm that type of Ramon. guy, Mike. The uh, Amy Wells rules. Let's go. Uh, hit it. Hit it? All give right, as many it as you want, my friend. As many as I want. One, I'm not going to say the obvious guy. Everybody will say Tavondre Sweat. I'm not even going to do that, okay? It's Jeffrey Simmons. Mm-hmm. We hadn't seen much of him in the preseason. We've seen him in practice. Um, going up a, against an old teammate sporadically out the course of the game and Nate Davis, like seeing how he reacts to that and how he sets the tone. As much as we talk about the newness of this defense, it starts with Jeff. It just does. If he comes out and I don't – if he's in the backfield, play one. Everybody else has to follow. And, and the next guy would have to be Kenneth Murray. It's just that simple for me. Um, And watching how Denard Wilson delegates his plays and what he's asking him to do. I think especially in week one, um, most teams offensively are very simple. They're very simple. It won't be much that they uh, want to do. You might get a flea flicker, maybe. But it's going to be run the ball. They got a rookie quarterback. So if seeing if Big Jeff can set the tone up front and, and Kenneth Murray be on the back end of that, by far is one of the most exciting tandems I want to watch throughout the duration of this season. So why did you pick Jeffrey Simmons over Tavondre Sweat? Just because he everything runs through him? It's, I'm giving you it's, three it's, now. It's, it's, yeah, that's beautiful. Uh-huh. You're such the homie, okay? I yeah, love I that know. about you. Yep, happy to help. <laughs> with that being said, uh, it's because I think if Jeff goes, then Tavondre knows how far he can go with it also. If Tavondre is the tone setter, which it will, be with, it will be times throughout the course of the season as he continues to mature, 
he should become the tone setter too. But if Jeffrey Simmons is showing you that, look, I don't go out but every five plays and this is how we attack and we're on the same page, it starts with Jeff. It's just like surrounding a, a, a world-class pitcher with defenders around him. That's what you want. Like you can have a cannon of an arm throwing heat, right? But if your defenders are bad, then what what use am I? And that's where I feel like it, it starts with Big Jeff. Like it's not disrespectfully saying this, but he's the son in that defense to me. The OTP pregame question topic three: Will the two teams choose to, in the new kickoff rule, kick the ball to one another, or? Will they just go ahead and kick a touchback all day long and not fiddle with it now that it's the regular season? I think they kick it to one another. Really? I do. Because uh, when you have the defenders that close also, and they've been working and nobody's shown a thing as it pertains to how they're going to break down the return team or how they're going to attack the return team too. And that's why I say if you can set a team back to get a – I call it a tackle for loss now because it's essentially an offensive play. Put them at about the 18 with true starters and not guys that are camp bodies, respectfully. Um, I think <laughs> <laughs> I think you have a better product, Mike, but it does come with a risk because the bad uh, a, a young rookie who closes too far inside could mean you're running down the sideline. Oh, and I think we're going to have a kickoff return for a touchdown in the NFL or two one. or three yes. in week one. Absolutely. I agree with But that. I also think there are going to be some teams who go, you know, we've dealt with this the whole preseason. Yeah. And, you know, we'll just give you the ball on the 30, have a nice day. That I'll, was cute. I yeah. also <sighs> think it's determined by score. Like if you're up 21 to 7 in the third quarter or in the fourth quarter, you may just say, you know what, I'm not sure how we'll cover this kick. So I'm just going to go ahead and kick Launch it through it. the end zone. Yep. It's, there, there's going to be a real strategy behind yeah. that too. It's complicated, it which it, is fun. It is. I fun. love it. I love it. I, I, I absolutely love. It. I know some people was like, "This is no, this is not dumb. This is good <laughs> to me because to your point, that is one of the most exciting plays." And all of football is watching a kick return go back or, or even a punt return. Oh, yeah. Think about it. Like, it's that many bodies coming at you and you just so happen to get clean or get grabbed and still stay up. Um, special team coaches are on notice on how you craft plays. I think now it's essential. It is. It's the first play of offense, and it actually is real. So the Titans have not had an opening kickoff return for a touchdown now. In 375 games. Whoa. So if the Titans receive the opening kickoff, we'll see if that streak holds and and see if they can can break it. That's back to 2001. Yeah. Wow. Derek Mason in Cincinnati was the last one to do it. The other thing to watch in Chicago on Sunday, it's supposed to be windy, which is not a surprise. So, if you're trying to kick off to the other team and hit the landing zone, you've got to make sure when you're kicking, like if you're kicking into the wind, you've got to make sure that you get it into the landing zone because if you don't, if, say, someone comes up and catches the ball at the 21-yard line, it's immediately blown dead and the team gets the ball at the 40. At the yep. 40. So there are all these little, especially now that it really counts, now that real game situations matter, now that win conditions can be a big thing, hanging that kickoff up in the air to the 10, maybe you need to try to kick it closer to the goal line, which is why you say maybe we'll just k try to kick a touchback or – and our resident meteorologist, Rhett Bryant, already gave me the wind report. It's supposed to be gusts of about 12 to 22 miles per hour. So to your point about just trying to drop Which it means right. normal Chicago. It is. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's normal for us. But he said you might want to bring a long sleeve shirt or something like that. Mm -hmm. To your point earlier about the clothes. But yeah. Uh, yeah. that if you drop it in front of the 20, play is done. It's dead. It's done. It's at the, and getting the ball at the 40 is a big deal. I'm telling any, anything would just be touchback city if you were playing against the Amy Wells. <laughs> well, and I think <laughs> just, 
I think them. there is going to be – I think you're 100% dead on. Yeah. I think there's going to be a mindset mm-hmm. of we're not fiddling with this. Nope. It was and cute, I, but, and, like, it's week one. And Let's I just... still say by the time we get to some point in October, I think that's what everybody's going to do. Yeah. Can, can we say this, too? And they haven't been barking loud at all. I'm anti-defense at times, okay? It's just the you way are. I was raised, okay? Yeah. okay. Uh, and they always find something to complain about. They've gotten hosed in this, too. An extra five yards on the original kickoff starting point, if if it's a touchback, that's five yards that you've given up essentially. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't go in the landing zone, the 40. Like, coaches have their, their systems in place that if we get the ball here, that's three points. The 40-yard line is we're in kicking field goal territory. Well, when you talk mm-hmm. analytics mm-hmm. about field position, there were a lot of people who were not happy when they moved the touchback from the 20 to the 25 because your percentage chance of trying to score from the 20 to the 25 goes up. From the 25 to the 30, it goes up. But if it eventually becomes the 35, which is what people feel like will be done eventually in order to motivate teams to kick off into the landing zone – the 35 and then to the 40, like what we're talking about, the percentage of being able to score points on that possession goes way up. Yeah. And, and again, defensive coaches have to plan for that. And special team coaches, too, you got to have guys that are probably more cerebral now, mm-hmm. that you got to have a kicker that understands his jobs and his tasks. Like, there's a lot that goes into, honestly, the losing of games. Those are like very flagrant penalties right there, essentially. Sure. And I haven't heard many defensive players even mention it. To, you know, like I said, going from the 20 to the 25, that helps one side of the ball, and that's the offense. Yeah. And now going to the 30, oh. it helps. And if it were to go to the 40, I mean, it's crushing. And, and and when we speak about, we hear Coach Max speak about like a, a three and out ain't a bad series sometimes because if you got a heck of a punter, and I think the Titans do. They, they sure do. They, yeah. yeah. Ryan mm-hmm. Stonehouse. And he's, he's back. Right. And he's back. Like you have a field flipper now. So you can essentially set the opposing offense up backed up. Like this gets deeper. Have you seen the Bears punter, the Australian that yeah. they have? He was featured quite a bit in Hard Knocks. This guy's something else, too. Yeah, he is. Mm. But first NFL game. Oh. Nerves. Could L- be interesting. little different. Could be interesting. All right. Question number four, the OTP pregame. Ramon Foster is our guest. Bigger impact on Sunday's final result, Caleb Williams, Will Levis. Biggest impact? In terms of who wins or loses? Um, it has to be Levis. Um, just because he's got tr- – Caleb Williams got a lot of veterans over there. O-line has been together for the most part, um, and their head coach has been in place too. Um, when you look at Will Levis having to contribute, I think going on the road is a factor. I think having this many new parts, um, watching which receivers um, will be activated on game day – that plays a part in it to me more than watching Caleb Williams on who's going to be number one overall player, having a playbook. He, it's been his since day one. I think he's got more surrounding parts around him to keep him successful and not have to do as much. I think Will Levis actually has to go get it this weekend. All right. I'm going to give you a shot at that. That was a I'm, really good question. I'm going to repeat it. That was great. Bigger impact on Sunday's final result, Caleb Williams or Will Levis? Well, you have to think that just because Caleb Williams is a rookie quarterback, and you alluded to this a little bit, because he's a rookie, the Bears are going to put a lot of safeties in place around him, knowing that this is his first game, he's going to do some rookie stuff, so you have to account for that, just... the nerves, the newness, the whatever it is. You have to account for that. So you would think that he will be a little insulated to where other parts of the team will keep him from having a big impact one way or the other. So if he plays great, fantastic. If he plays terrible, we're trying to help him out and like keep keep our guy together here. Whereas Will Levis because this is his offense and because he has more experience, there's more leaning on him. So you would think that if he has a great game, he's going to have a great game. And if he has a bad game, it might have more impact on other aspects of the team. Not to say that this isn't a 
team sport, but more things would go through him. So I'm going to say that Will Levis will have a bigger impact. I like seeing Amy get in that mold. So you agree with Ramon? She yeah. leans forward. I think so, but I, had to, I kind of had to back into it. Well, you're leaning forward. You're you leaning are. into I'm it. I'm leaning into my thinking. Yeah. I had to back there. into I, agreement. I, I, I believe you more because you're leaning into it. I think Ramon was just saying that. I really just gave she it a lot of going, thought. She got going, Mike, and I started smiling because, she's you're ready to go. Where are your shoulder pads at? Well, I'm, I mean, it's Thursday. It's, like, yeah, it's, let's go. Attention, Titans fans. Are you looking to unlock the power of your home equity? Wesley Mortgage is here to help with their amazing home equity line of credit, or HELOC options. With a HELOC from Wesley Mortgage, you can access the funds you need for home improvements, debt consolidation, or even that dream vacation. Plus, with flexible terms and competitive rates, it's easier than ever to achieve your financial goals. Visit wesleymortgage.com today to learn more and get started. That's wesleymortgage.com. Wesley Mortgage, where your home's equity works for you. Hey, Titans fans, SeatGeek makes it easy to find tickets so you can be a part of all the touchdown celebrations this season. Whether you're buying or selling football tickets, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek is the official primary ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. The most disruptive idea in ticketing, a ticket that works. Expect the expected. SeatGeek. SeatGeek. <laughs> Question five, the OTP pregame. Who rushes for more yards, the Tennessee Titans or the Chicago Bears on Sunday? I go to Titans. They have one bell cow over there. The Titans have two. And here's the other part of it, too. The settling of this game from what we saw in preseason and how Olga and Bertha have been just a talking point here, you have to run the ball. Absolutely have to run the ball and establish it one way to dead a crowd on the road is to beat up the opposing defensive line. And that's where, to me, watching Tajay Spears and and Tony Pollard run this weekend is I think they will have the most yards, Mike, because of those factors. You know what scares me about Chicago towards why they could win this total, the rushing total? Valus Jones. Mm. Because Valus Jones, they're going to have something in this game for Valus Jones. If he's active, which I think he will be, and that four three three speed, I mean, he could pop a long one that could be a potential game changer in week one because nobody really has any idea how they're going to use him now that they have moved him to running back full time. Great for him. I mean, he's extending his career right now, oh, too. Oh, sure. I mean, he's pulling the Cadero Patterson. Uh, 100%. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He is. Um, I, I just like the tandem. Again, if, if Tajay makes it you. out with 86 yards and Tony Pollard makes it out with 98. That'd be great. That'd be an awesome day. And, again, mm-hmm. it's the first one. Um, I think, honestly, I'd love to see Will Levis go through the air. But if the first game means you get a road win and you dominate on the ground, the receivers can take a back seat this weekend. <laughs> well, Brian, <laughs> hey, listen, Brian yeah. Callahan has made it clear they're going to run the football. Yeah. And they're going to run out of three wides. And, I mean, they're going to do it different ways. They're going to be more apt to throw on first down than the Titans have probably been in the past. But, listen, if you're ahead in the second half and you've got Caleb Williams trying to come from behind in his first game and it's real windy and you're on the road, yeah, you may just try to pound it and get out of there. And Mm – that's winning football. It is. Mm-hmm. The best part about this, too, is you. I lit up when you said something. Second go, the multiple sets that they can run mm-hmm. the ball out of, mm-hmm. th- that to me is where it's very diverse, where we saw it also just a little bit in, in New Orleans in the preseason game where they motioned Tajay Spears back into the backfield. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. In, in a nickel set. And I was just like, oh, my gosh. This this reminded me of the days where I played. Whereas I sound so old saying that right there, Reminds but it's just days. five years ago uh. when, when we were running the ball well, we'd have a five wide essentially with a running back on the field and motion him into the backfield. And at that point, the defense had to adjust because if they go dime and nickel, and I trust my offensive line, oh, we're about to beat them up because you bought in a rush specialist and not a run stopper. So at that point, no huddle. Let's keep going, and that's what I'm hoping we see on Sunday and throughout the rest of the season. 
I got to. That's too much for me. On, Did on you today. wear helmets when you played? Or <laughs> what was the what was the protocol there? No mouth back in your day. No gloves. <laughs> what was the, yeah, block the on my overall. forearms. <laughs> it's time. Don't use your hands. Can I move along now? <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. Can I join the conversation? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Thank you. It's time now for a new feature on the OTP pregame, brought to you by our friends at Little Caesars. Well known for pizza delivery and for saying pizza, pizza. Pizza, pizza. All right, so Max Walsh, let's bring in the pizza for Ramon Foster. He's going to – Ramon, here's Max. Thank no, you. No, he's holding all of them. Give me all oh, of them. Well, why are you being so stingy, man? Yeah. Come on, Max. What are we talking about here? And they've got their NFL shield let's on the box see that. there. Look, and a QR nice? code on here too. Isn't that nice? They are. Yeah. All right, so Amy and I are going to have to look at – in this we direction. have to look at opposite, or I have to look at opposite things. But I have my timer all queued up. You have the up. timer. Okay, yes. so read the read <clears> the <throat> open. It's time for the key ingredients of the game delivered by Little Caesars. Pizza, pizza. Thank you. All right, Mike, the timer starts now. Okay. The Chicago Bears will start number one overall pick Caleb Williams at quarterback on Sunday against the Titans. Key number one for the Titans is for the secondary to play great. Sunday's defensive performance will come down to coverage. Key number two is about the Titans quarterback Will Levis's decision making. If at the end of the day Will Levis has managed the Titans offense effectively, Titans likely start 1-0. Key number three, prepare for the unexpected. There will be surprises, bad bounces, bad calls. This is a week one tradition. How how you hold up in these moments often determines whether or not you win or lose in Chicago time. Wow, we're going to have to make these harder. Those are the key ingredients to the game delivered by Little Caesars. Pizza, pizza. Little Caesars is the official pizza partner of your Tennessee Titans. Pizza, from, pizza. From now until September 15th. Pizza, pizza. Get free delivery when you order Little Caesars. No catch. Not doing it that pizza, time. Pizza, pizza. <laughs> At participating locations. Pizza, pizza. I have to tell you about the limit, though. You can only get one per person per day. Pizza, Perfect. Pizza. Mike, we've got to make this harder. You did that in 37 seconds. I did. Good. You did. So we're going to have to decrease the time. We went with 60, and that is just too easy. Well, no, we'll go with 60 because that'll give me a little more time. That's true. Regular season Mike is here, Amy. What are you doing? I know. I know. I'm working with a professional. And <laughs> are we doing Hellman's I here? Forget. Yeah, let's talk about Hellman's, okay, too. Okay, <laughs> Hellman's. Uh, this is brought to you by our friends at Hellman's. Bring me the Are you going to do the? Oh. Max? Oh, wow. Max, can you retrieve our, our stuff? Jack, Jack's right, going to Jack bring the helmets in further. right there. I would say white I feel gloves. like I'm showing you in the pantry. Okay. So Here, Ramon. Ramon, there no, we go. Yep. He's Vanna. He's doing I really am. Oh, yeah, This he's is so a, good. I love What about show. Vanna hanging in there with Ryan Seacrest? That was pretty um, strong. That is Hang on, let strong. me read right. this really fast. Oh, I think I'm supposed to read oh, this. Oh, are you going to read it? He's a professional. Helmets. A mayo tovational nope. from Helmets. It <laughs> is. This is Hellman's, a Mayo Tivational from Hellman's. Mayo Titans cheers be loud, and your buffalo chicken dip make you proud. Hellman's, the official mayo of the Tennessee Titans. Mayo game day be delicious. Yeah, that's going to be mine going forward, I think. You want to do it? See if you, <laughs> do it see if you do it better. <clears throat> All right, scroll back. So My the, turn. <laughs> a mayo vation. From Hellman's, may your Titans cheers be loud and your buffalo chicken dip make you or your mama proud. Hellman's, the official mayo of the Tennessee Titans. May your game day be delicious. They wow. wrote that. Wasn't that nice? It really was. Uh, it was it's kind of like honest. a fortune cookie or a bumper sticker. Mm -hmm. Aim, I, vote goes to Amy on that one, Mike. I'm sorry. She, well, she got to hear me do it, though. No. <laughs> I got to hear it wrong. By the way, isn't it great that he wore a dark sweater? So it the, pops. Yeah, it really it pops. pops. Makes See? the mayo pop. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. it's See, it's now, now that they've seen you with the, the helmets, now it's going to be you and Levis. See, mm -hmm. don't play. The cologne, by the way, actually smells it smells good. It's not bad. And it's gone. I'll it do is it gone. with them. I make, a, I make some mean devil eggs with this. This is actually what I have at home. All right, so here's the bonus. Player you're most interested to see on Sunday. Most interested. LeJerry Sneed. Wow. Yes. That's yes, a Mike. good one. That's a really um, good one. 
awesome signing. I think we look at the numbers now. It is a great signing, okay? Uh, you got a number one cornerback here. You got a guy that can shut down one side of the field, and you're going to need that on this Sunday. Oh, yeah. DJ Moore is no uh, corner kid, okay? He actually gets it done. He's up and down the field. He's side to side. And I heard um, a couple of cup, uh, uh, of course, a couple of interviews and podcasts that Legarius has done. He takes pride in being number one. He takes pride. I think he said he went to so coach. So you think he will travel? Well, with a- he said that on the podcast I listened to recently. Said that he went to Coast Bagnola last year in Kansas City. Said I want to travel. Don't let me. Don't let. And what that means is oh, he's yeah. going to go with. For those who don't know. He's going to trail a certain receiver yes. wherever he lines up. Wide receiver one usually, right. and uh, we'll see if if Denard Wilson allows that. But his confidence of being able to be a shutdown guy, and even if that's three catches for fifty yards, that's a really good day against a team's number one wide receiver. I'm very interested to see him live and in action in Chicago. That's a good one. And yours. Uh, Calvin Ridley, I oh, think. Oh, yeah, that's a good yeah. one. That's I, good I'm one. just very excited to see him do what he does best in a Titans jersey. <laughs> um, I'm uh, He is filling such a huge need for this Titans team, for this organization, really. I, it, with all things set up the way that they are right now, with the play calling, with the other people on the offense – all of the pieces are in place for us to finally have a just dynamic receiving core. And I am so excited. And I think that Calvin Ridley is going to be a really big part of that. So I'm excited to watch him hopefully start what is going to be a phenomenal season for Titans receivers. I said it on Titans tonight, Harold Landry. Mm-hmm. That's I, I think Harold Landry is going to have a big year. I think he's going to get off to a start in Chicago. I think they've handled him well. I think he's practiced well. I think he's ready to go. He was hot as a firecracker last year down the stretch. Uh, couldn't block him in Miami on Monday night. And I, I think he he's going he's gonna to benefit so much in this defense because there's so many other guys you got to fiddle with. Mm-hmm. Yep. And yep. All, all, So what are you going to do with him? And got to let him run. I, I, mean, I heard you mm-hmm. say that last night. You, you're right. He's almost just like the long lost brother. Like, I've been here the whole time, y'all. Oh, yeah. And I, I, I think you're 100% correct on that, Mike. He's he's done it before. Mm-hmm. Nine and a half last year. Ten it, and a half, nine and a half in the last 13 wow, games. Five and a wow. half in the last six games. Yeah. And they got a left tackle over there in Chicago. That is uh, the same way I said, you know, you got to look at Montez Sweat and J.C. Latham. The same energy should be here in Nashville towards their offensive linemen, too. I, I'm, I'm with you. Harold didn't get enough conversation this offseason. But maybe that's good. I mean, he doesn't yeah. want it, really. Uh, no, true. he definitely doesn't want it. I think it's great. I like him being kind of like the the forgotten yeah. in over there. And then, ta-da. Ta-da. That's what I'm hoping for. Here we go. That. Yeah. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of the OTP pregame. You get you some mayonnaise. I, I mean, Let me see that mayonnaise you, for a minute. Are you sure? Yeah. Did you know that's made with cage-free eggs? I didn't know that. <laughs> it says that right here on the front. I did know that. For Ramon Foster, <laughs> I'm Mike Keith. <laughs> and Amy Wells, wanting a spokesperson's job with helmets. Well, no, I just didn't know. We thank you for joining us for the OTP. Did you really know that? I didn't know that. Well, I just read it, too. So. Oh, okay. I, mean, so I knew you're it before with me. you. I bought it. <laughs> well, you bought okay, it. So I bought you it myself. S-